Today we're going to show you how we built this sliding and extendable van bed that doubles up as a comfy futon sofa with integrated drawers and storage. We've adapted this from designs we've seen in other vans on YouTube channels and I'm sure you can make it work in your van. The first stage is to cut the side pieces and I'm going to cut them so they're the same height as my box there which is 38 and a half centimeters. By the time a uh, 18 mil piece of plywood goes on the top of that we're looking at around 40 point five centimeters add on top of there the mat that we're going to use about another five centimeters so that should give us a seated position in and around like when it's compressed around 42 to 45 centimeters which should be about just right for what we want it the first step that i've taken with all of this is to gather all of my 15 mil plywood so i've got a mixture of birch poplar and a couple of other bits knocking about I'm going to try and use all of this without buying anything else and then actually for the bed base itself I've got some marine ply in there I'm just trying to use what we've got at this stage so I selected my pieces of plywood going with two pieces of poplar and a piece of birch so I cut one oversized piece first and scribed that into the wall and I used that as a template to cut the two end pieces I even grabbed an old jig that I've made to make draw slides to dismantle that to use the poplar and then cut all of the sides making sure that they were sanded to height. This piece of off cut was used to make the bottom support section so I decided to actually wedge out the bottom of each of the side bits and then cut a 137 centimeter piece that sat along the entire bottom and this is going to provide horizontal structure as well as a place to secure the bench down into the floor eventually. I then turn my attention to the top. This is an 18 mil piece of plywood. It's gonna provide the footprint for the bed itself, so the actual mattress support. But it's gonna be cut into four pieces. This 183 length down to 140 across here. And then we're gonna cut a 6.5 centimeter strip down the back and that's going to provide the back piece where our hinge is going to attach to at the back of the bed so this bit here is going to be attached with screws from the top and then the piano hinges are going to go along the back here and i'll screw through into the pieces underneath and pop them in and then what we'll be able to do is measure the gaps between to make the spaces for the front the imas heater in our bus was going to sit underneath so we did space the bench to fit around that although largely it has come out even we attached the spacer bars using pocket hole screws where you put two on each end to make sure it was nice and sturdy cutting the support strips to go on the side remember this bit here this is from our pantry so this is another piece of scrap so these are six centimeters wide i'm just cutting the front pieces here and then um we'll get the slides out and just see where it's going to go because these are going to be positioned underneath the sliders we went for locking sliders on the end and normal sliders in the middle when i say normal these are heavy duty good for 250 kilos each these heavy duty sliders really do weigh quite a bit but they go in with such a solid clunk click um, and we've used them on the toilet so we know that they are good and strong to support them we added stretcher bars underneath and this is also going to provide a front lip for our drawer fronts at this point i added pocket holes to the bottom of the unit just for an extra securing point later on we then needed to attach some plywood strips to act as runners to the drawer runners themselves first of all attach some double-sided tape then screw through after adding pocket holes this bit here is the remainder of the bed base so what i'm going to do now is cut the seating platform and i'm going to cut that 48 centimeters and then i'm going to cut the back piece in half so they're even and you'll see why in a minute the drawer runners were then extended and we attached using pocket hole screws pulling the platform out a little bit at a time to ensure that it remains square with the rest of the unit this did seem like the best way to do it but then we did come unstuck and realized that it just wasn't going to slide on in this way and it needed some modification now then this top has 
proven to be a little bit trickier than what we'd hope. Um, we want it to slide up and sit on the supports as well as on the sliders. We want our cake and eat it. So it's sturdy, right? The problem is the friction was just too great. So we've had to take off like millimeters at a time and we've used the router to just groove out to where it goes over the slides. So it's just got a free run of it. It's Kenny. It's a hot, hot day today, but we're gonna try and get this top on next to see if it slides like it should. One of the reasons we went for this sliding bed design is because we wanted lots of storage underneath. So we set about making some drawers. Now when you make drawers, you need to remember to take the width of the aperture plus the runners into account, which is what I'm doing here. What I did first was cut down the sides. So I opted for 16 centimeter high sides on the drawers, just because they fitted well. I then cut the sides at 55 centimeters each before cutting the front and back and then realizing that I needed that jig that I took apart earlier for one of the sides. Because I've cut up my jig to make the size of that, I need to make another jig. To achieve this, I grabbed a flat piece of scrap and two 15 millimeter high pieces of plywood and then screwed one piece to the back and then another piece the same width as my drawer sides and front before attaching my router and then this allowed me to basically sled through each of the sides and fronts to cut my dado. Now I cut mine at 5mm depth because we, I have 15mm to work with. This meant I had a nice sensible groove for the drawer bottom to fit into and I decided to cut that drawer bottom from 9mm plywood that I had knocking about in the garage. Before I did cut the drawer bases, I needed to take into account that dado. The way that I constructed my drawers meant that from side to side, the base needed to be one centimeter wider than the width of the front and back. But from back to front, you need to take away two centimeters to account for it. I then added pocket holes to the front and back because these will be hidden once I put the false front on. I opted for some soft closed ball bearing drawer runners because I've proven in the past that actually these obviously close really nicely but also they really do help with keeping the drawers closed whilst in transit. I wouldn't rely on it on its own. For easy operation and slideability of the bed we wanted to add a handle. We achieved this by drilling out two 32mm holes and we linked that with a good straight line, cut it out with a jigsaw and then Dave neatened it up with his router. This bit here we used to cover the front edge and we used the same trick to drill out two holes to make a handle for that. We also drilled out 32 millimeter holes in the bed base for air holes, you'll see that a bit later. Here you can see that I've drawn around where I want my drawer fronts to go. This is actually gonna be a lid because the eye mass is behind it. So I wanted to add flush fitting hinges. So I used this jig to just drill out the cups for those hinges, attach them with some self tapping screws and then put it in place whilst in situ. And then cut the remaining drawer fronts and then screwed them through the existing drawers from the front to the back. Then came the scary bit because we didn't know it was going to work. The front bit was just attached with a piano hinge. However, the leaf at the back needed to be attached with this web strap that I got from B&Q. And the reason being, it needed to be a little bit more flexible. Before we put it in the van, we decided to completely oil it outside because it's just such a messy job. Osmo oil is amazing, but it's very messy. Once in the bus, it allowed me to secure through the floor and the wall with 6.5 centimeter screws. You can see it's pretty strong already. I then attached the piano hinges with 16 millimeter screws. I decided to put a piano hinge the full length of the front and back. And you can see here how it's attached. And you can see also why this flexible hinge needed to be made. And you'll see how this operates a little bit later on. 
All right, so as it stands, drawers are in, it functions. We'll show you that a bit later. We need to make an extension to go on the end because at the moment it's only 140. We want it to be about 183. The bit cut off the plywood was basically added back on with removable hinges. And then I used these to secure some legs. The futon cushion did arrive and we added it to the sofa before leaving on our travels. When we arrived, Lily helped turn the bed from day to night mode so we could test it out for the night. Top tip here, make sure you bring a guest duvet as the turtle's blanket is not big enough for two human beings. Putting the bed back into sofa mode is simply the reverse. Pop the sliding tabs down, push in until it locks and add the cushion back on. We have already discovered that the cushion works in this short mode for the day and a taller mode for the night, which is ideal for lounging and relaxing. Let us know what you think of our sliding van sofa and whether you've done anything similar. Thank you so much for watching.